Hello, hi everybody, and welcome back to episode number four of Look at That There. Tonight's episode, we actually have some very interesting things to show you. First, we're gonna go back down to the end of Kahokai. I know I've been spending a lot of time on images from there, but there is just a lot to see uh, that you don't normally, don't, don't actually see in the very beginning when you first see some of these images, unless I point it out and tell you to, hey, look at that there. Um, however, at the end of this particular episode, we are going to do a special uh, little look at that there of Fissure 8 and something about Fissure 8 that I've spoke about in previous update videos, actually numerous update videos, and it's something we all collectively kind of watched for a little bit. Um, I'm going to show you something pretty cool about that. So, however, before we get on to that one, let's go ahead and, and go to our first set of images uh, from the lower end of Kahokai and Leilani Estates. All right, here is our first image uh, we're gonna take a look at. Uh, if you look at the top left of the, of the image, you see that uh, uh, the sky is bright. So this photo has actually been, was taken uh, early in the morning as the sun was rising uh, behind the uh, erupting uh, fissures here at the lower end of Kaokai. But what I want you to actually take a look at that there is, is this shadow right here. I have spent numerous, numerous uh, times looking at this image uh, over a dozen trying to figure out exactly what that was causing that shadow because it's it, it doesn't make any sense that the Sun is in front of us so shadows should be coming towards us and the if you follow the shadow to a point there's that you know the, the trunk of a tree way back there you know in in the middle but that can't be causing the shadow because none of the other trees or anything around it is, is casting a shadow either and we know the shadow can't be coming be from behind us um, because there's no light source back there. There's no flash photography going on. We didn't need it. Um, so I, you know, have taken this image into uh, photo editing and processing software to take a look at it, see if I could bring out some details. And uh, after running a, a, a little process on it, changing some of the colors, basically highlighting, you know, doing an outline filter on it to outline, you know, all the, the edges and things in the photo uh, to kind of, you know, give us a, a better grasp as to where, you know, the, the uh, geometry in the Im or the image is. And what I discovered uh, was exactly what was causing the shadow. And until I point it out, you probably won't see it. So here we go. I'm going to zoom in on what is actually creating the shadow. Well, what's responsible for what's creating the shadow. And look at that there. Do you see it? What we're actually looking at is a burning vehicle, a, a truck to be uh, precise. And what is happening is as that truck is burning, uh, it's creating a very dense black <clears throat> toxic smoke. But hey, you know, all the smoke out here technically was toxic at the time, so we can't fault it for that. But uh, anyways, um, it's creating this big thick uh, smoke and that smoke is actually being pulled in through the, uh, the backdraft uh, created by the erupting fissures and, and pulling uh, that smoke across uh, the flow there. Well, however, that smoke is so thick that it's actually casting a shadow, uh, which is what we see in front of it. Um, pretty cool actually and uh, I was surprised when I realized what it was so I even went back and and see if I could find photos before uh, it had erupted and I found this one so as you can see right there uh, there's our truck and if you look um, actually back into the image towards the left we, we see another vehicle there uh, this was actually on uh, an individual's property. This is actually the, uh, if, if you've watched Scott at a Pau Hawaii Tours and uh, some of my earlier videos when this was all happening, you heard us refer to this house as the doghouse house because it had a doghouse right at the end of the driveway. Also something else I'd like you to take notice of is the actual elevation difference from uh, where I'm standing taking the photograph to where the vehicles are. Now we know the vehicle is probably about six feet, maybe six and a half feet in height, and it's still below the surface that I'm standing on. So I, I'm estimating I was somewhere between uh, eight and 10 feet above that area. Now back to your other picture, it'll help give you uh, a little bit of perspective on just how tall this this lava pond so far is it, it's at least about 10 feet in height uh, even though it's still creeping 
you know to the left in the image i hasn't fully buried the the, the truck there uh, that we were looking at uh, but it is uh, at the point on the truck where it is at the top uh, roof above the windshield and you know moving towards the back so it's pretty wild and it's really amazing how some of the stuff i i didn't even see and I was standing out there seeing it with my own eyes. I, I don't catch it until I come back and look at the videos and the photos. So anyways, let's go on and move on to our second set, uh, which is actually down at the lower Kahakai as well. And it deals with the doghouse house. As And uh, as you see here in the first image, this is actually before any of the fissures in this area actually opened up and started filling uh, it with lava. What I want you to look at that there is, is right here um first look at the road and you see that uh this crack before the the telephone pole in the road uh actually is just a crack you know the road elevation is still about the same etc and here on the left there's uh, a mailbox for the driveway to the property that uh we were just looking at that had the burning truck but the mailbox is actually um back in the bushes and that's actually important which is why i'm pointing it out because if we move over and take a look at this photo what we're looking at is that exact same area and the crack that was there uh, before the telephone pole and at the mailbox but if you look at that there what we see is that not only has this land uh, at the crack or past the crack risen in elevation compared to the other land or maybe the land I'm standing on in the photo actually you know sunk perhaps however what's really important if you look at the mailbox and you look at that there the mailbox has shifted to the right it is no longer in the bushes as it was in the previous photo so the land has risen and shifted uh, in some manner um, which just shows the the you know the the power of the you know the event it, it's label it's able it was able to literally take big chunks of ground and lift it and move it to a different location literally i mean it's just amazing to go back and look at some of these this imagery and everything and as cool as this is um you're really going to be amazed at what is coming up next um we're going to go take a look at fissure eight and as i said earlier something that we've talked about before that we've looked at before that we kind of watched before but uh never went back and took a look at it quite like what we're going to do uh like what we're going to do now all right so for everybody that's been watching y'all all know this is fissure eight for those that don't this is the the fissure that did most of uh the output however what i want you to look at is uh the rocks right here in this area uh this was taken on june 3rd and this is what it looked like then now we move over to june 18th and if you look at that there those rocks that i used as a reference point in the last video uh, are no longer there in this image they have actually formed a cap and we see the beginning of what i was referring to and that is the lava tube that was created there just uh, past the exit of the spillway of the fissure eight cone uh, i've pointed it out before you know it looked like a lava tube it'd be interesting to see what's going to happen um, I, I've even pointed out in some of my previous videos when we got a really nice good up and close look at the, the videos titled uh, Exclusive. Um, go watch those if you haven't. Uh, we do get a look at uh, what looks like the entrance which is on you know, the, the spillway side of the, the lava tube. And it does look like there may be one there. How big it is, if it continues to go all the way through, I couldn't really say. However, we're not done yet. We're going to continue to follow this through time and watch it develop because this is really cool so let's let's get on to the next image okay this video clip is from the 19th and we see the exit of the lava tube pouring lava as the fissure eight continues to erupt the camera now will you know move over to, uh, to a more aerial view and we see there that the lava tube is obviously intact and looks like it goes back into 
uh, that, that cap a little way, so there may even be a lava cave. This photograph was actually taken uh, on the 24th of June, uh, and as we can see, that, uh, that, that elongated area that in the previous video that looked like the lava cave has now crusted over and there's a small skylight uh, in the tube. However, the tube is still uh, functional and flowing with molten lava. Of course, that'll keep it open. And this image taken the same day from a different perspective, uh, we can definitely see that uh, there is a nice w glowing hot spot there at the exit of what is our fissure 8 lava tube. Uh, so what you've all actually got to witness in look at that there is actually an amazing look at that there because you watched the formation of a surface lava tube. This is how it works. Uh, it could start with a few little rocks and those rocks just happen to create, you know, um, a, a drag which slows the surface down, lets it cool down a little bit and it, it just starts building and building and building. Um, and that's the way lava works is is it just doesn't just flow and then get hard it, it builds itself you know over layers on top of layers that flow past and build another so it's it's really an amazing process so anyways though i won't go on about that and that'll actually do it for this episode of look at that there i, I hope you enjoyed it and if you know what to do ooh, thunder yes it's raining here everybody um if you noticed in some of the audio just previous to the, the closing here, uh, there was some distortion or some noise in the background. That that was the rain. Uh, I eventually had to get up and close the door and window because the rain was coming in or, or I would have left it open. But anyways, if you like the video, hit that thumbs up button. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, uh, go ahead and hit the, the subscribe button. And if you want to get notified when I post new videos, also hit that bell icon. But don't forget to change the options because the default setting is some notifications. And if you really want to receive all notifications for my videos, then you need to change it. Um, just wanted to give you all that heads up. So that'll do it. Um, don't forget to check out my Redbubble, Smug Mug, uh, Twitter account. Um, support me on Patreon if you can. I'd really appreciate it. That, that helps me keep creating content. And until next time, everybody, I hope you have a superb morning, afternoon, or evening.